I can't tell you how many times I've called spas or service providers that I found on Google and they didn't pick up. I've created an AI call receptionist that's able to book appointment, reschedule appointment and cancel appointment and also answer FAQ, all that done for you. And you can set this up in under 30 minutes if you follow my templates. So let's go take a look. Let's start by making a demo call to the agent. Hello, this is Julie from Ivy Beauty Clinic. How can I assist you today? I want to reschedule my appointment. Sure. Can I get your first name to start the rescheduling process? Yeah, it's Audrey. Give me a moment. Thanks, Audrey. I found your appointment scheduled for March 7th, 2025 at 12 p.m. Would you like to proceed with rescheduling it? Yeah. Great. What new date and time do you have in mind? Tomorrow, Remember, it tomorrow at 1. Just to confirm... You'd like to reschedule for tomorrow at 1 p.m., right? Yeah. Give me a moment. Awesome. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. is available. Now, what service would you like to book for your appointment? Just free consultation. Perfect. Can I also get your phone number to complete the booking? Yeah, it's 1234. Give me a moment. Your original appointment has been successfully canceled, and I've booked your free consultation for tomorrow at 1 p.m. If you need anything else, just let me know. Enjoy your day, Audrey. Thank you. Okay, let's go into VAPI to take a look at the prompt I've set up for the agent. So very first step, you do want to give the AI agent the objective. What is the primary responsibility? What are some of the tasks you want it to carry out? And then I'm also giving it instruction on how to handle basic call query. Things I want to call out here is um, I find it sometimes it's trying to find a word by word match in the knowledge base. And that's something I'm trying to avoid. So here I'm prompting the AI agent to look for keywords instead of finding an exact match. And if there's no exact match or there's nothing similar in the knowledge base that could reference that we do offer such service, then do suggest an alternative service to kind of help with the upsell and really drive the caller into booking an appointment. Now proceed for the second half of the prompt. I'm outlining the three different tasks I want it to carry out. So being able to book appointment, cancel appointment and reschedule appointment. And you can see I've also clearly outlined each step what the instruction is just to minimize any chance of errors. I'm going to dive deeper into the reschedule part because this one combines both cancellation and booking. So within this reschedule appointment section, I'm actually kind of initiating multiple two calls. It's called two calls in VAPI. So it's set up on the left-hand side under tools. And maybe I think it was used to call functional call. Uh, so let's go step by step. And as we reach each functional call, we'll also take a look at how it's being set up. And this rescheduling is what also what I just demoed on the call. So the very first step is to request caller's first name for the appointment. And that's going to be the identifier for us to search and find that appointment on the, on the Google Calendar. And then the second step is to initiate search cancellation booking tool. So let's take a look at the tool set up here. So search cancel booking has my integration webhook entered right over here. And then I'm also asking it to collect the variable name, which is going to be used as a necessary information. Scenario here, I have my webhook, and then the immediate next step is to search event. The time range I have given is from now to the 60 days, the next 60 days into the future. I think that's a reasonable range to try to locate such booking. And then I'm also querying or searching any event with the caller's name in the title. And from there, it could lead me to three different possibilities. One is the perfect scenario. We find the exact match, in which case we'll send that information back to VAPI given the exact appointment time so the agent can confirm that with the caller. But if the agent have found more than one match or zero match, then at this point, I've set up to let the agent transfer a call to a in-clinic staff or a human support to kind of help with the edge case. Back to our reschedule prompt. Now that we have found the 
appointment that they want to cancel, the next step is to confirm if that was the appointment they want to reschedule. If they have confirmed that we're going to proceed with the cancel booking tool. So this, um, by prompting it to initiate cancel booking tool, it will call the tool call that we set up here called cancel booking. And that's linked to a separate API, uh, a separate webhook. And over here, I'm also just collecting the variable name to send it to my scenario. So you can see here, the cancellation tool is relatively simple. I'm just searching for that calendar event one more time using the same time range and same criteria, which is the name. And then this search event is going to give me the exact event ID, which I will be referencing in the delete event action. So I'm trying to delete that exact event off my calendar and then sending the webhook response back to that beat. Now that we have finished the cancellation part, the next step is to ask the preferred new day and time. So the caller will likely give you their time preference. And the next step is to initiate get availability tool. So still it's set up under tools. The availability tool is the most complex one. So let's take a look at what I have set up here. Zoom in. The very first step is a ChatGPT module. The only collective variable from VAPI is the user response to their time preference. So the very first ChatGPT module that I've set up here is to interpret their response. I think generally there's going to be two types of response, whether the caller knows exactly what day and time they want to come in. Very specific, I want to come in tomorrow at 12. Do you have that time available? Or they could give you a generic response like, anytime next Wednesday or anytime next week. So here I'm just putting that response into two different buckets. Yes, being they have given a specific, specific date and time and no being it's a generic one. And that's going to send my uh, scenario onto two separate pathways. So if we go down the specific time one, the next step is to convert that uh, time preference, which could be tomorrow at 12, and based on the current time, this GPT module is essentially converting that its specific time preference into a time format that I can use to search on my Google Calendar. So you can see here the system prompt is you be given a user preference. I want you to convert that into a specific format. And then the user prompt is going to be given the knowledge of current time and also the user preference. And from here, I'm going to search on my calendar to see, hey, am I available at that time? And the range here I've set up is the customer preference, which is tomorrow at 12 plus um, by one more hour. So within that hour block. And then if I am not busy, then perfect scenario, we're ready to go to the next step, which is to set up the meeting or set up the appointment. If I am busy, then I'm trying to look through my calendar again, based on their preference. I'm looking for the next day. What are all the time slots I have that are busy? Because then I can give valuable information back to the agent to suggest other time slots that's similar to what they're asking that were available. So this module, these three module here, essentially is being able to aggregate multiple time slots into a bundle. And then I can feed that into ChatGPT to then give me three available times based on all that information, which is what the customer prefers and what are all the available times or the busy time I have. Based on that, give me three available times that I can then give it to them as an option. So then this webhook response is simply giving the time that we are available and letting them know that specific time requested is not available. So if we go up and take a look at this route, when there is no specific time in indicated by the user, the ChatGPT module here is going to, I believe this one is going to output and range. So based on their preference, which could be anytime next week to anything on the 19th, I'm going to interpret that or convert that into a time range, which could be, um, you know, this date at 12 to to the following day at 11.59 p.m. And then I can better interpret that results by parsing that into two separate variables. So here I'm parsing that into a start time and, um, and then a end time. So I'm putting both 
then I have these two variables separated. I'm able to put these variable now into the start and end time in my Google Calendar to then retrieve all the availability information. And then now these three bundles together, just working together to give me a bundle that I can feed into ChatGPT to then tell me, hey, now I have all this time that I'm available during that rough time range that they um, are that they want to come in. Can you give me three available time? So you can see in my prompt here, I said I'll put three av available time slots according to the following rule. Make sure it's during business hours. The time slots are generated for that specific day range that we requested. So the user prompt here is the day range and also the busy time I've retrieved from my Google Calendar. And then I'm sending this information back to VAPI. Now that we've received all that information from Get Availability Tool, I can final confirm with the caller what is the, the new date and time. Uh, they potentially ch have chosen a time that we offer as an option. And now the next step is to get the service they wanna book for, as well as their first name and phone number to collect their information and then trigger our final book time tool. The booking tool is extremely simple. I'm just creating a calendar event based on all the information that's gathered, uh, including the phone number, the service, their name in the title. And there you have it. That's a very simple setup. Now you can have your own AI receptionist that's able to carry out some of the most essential and basic tasks as a front desk support.